If you want to create colors like these, I'm going to show you how it's done. We are going to use Lightroom's color grading panel to achieve these intense, beautifully saturated color tones. And along the way, we are going to turn this RAW file into that final image. As always, you can follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of the video. And now, let's begin. As always, I will be showing the whole editing process, so if you're just here for the color grading part, make sure to check the chapters of the video to quickly navigate to that point. First off, however, since we're working with a scene with a bigger tonal range, that means bright highlights and deep shadows, I'm going to merge an HDR first. So what I'm going to do down here in the film strip, I'm going to select all five images, right click on one of them, go to photo merge and choose HDR. In this preview window, we don't need to do anything, just make sure auto align is selected and then hit the merge button. Lightroom will now create the HDR file for us. And there we have it. Now we can start with the basic adjustments. So let's open up the basic panel right away. I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will slightly brighten up the darkest areas. It will overall lessen the contrast, which in turn just means we do have more control over the contrast ourselves. Of course, the base image is still super dark, so we're going to fix that first. So let me just pull up the exposure a little bit. I really want to keep the image on the darker side, but still we need to have a bit more detail in those very dark areas. I'm also going to bring up the shadows. I'm going to raise them a little more because with the shadows we are targeting these darker areas specifically and we're not altering the highlights. So that's really, really important. And of course, looking at the sky, it's completely blown out. But since we're working with an HDR file, that's not an issue. We can fix it quite easily. Just pull down the highlights until we get some nice details in here. So right around here looks pretty good. I'm also going to bring up the blacks. Again, just making the darker areas a little brighter this way. And finally, to add back a little bit of contrast, I'm going to increase the whites very gently. All right, exposure wise, that is looking pretty good already. I think I want to keep it dark like this. However, the white balance is still a bit off. Right now, you can see a clear blue color cast. It kind of does look natural, but I want to make this shot a lot warmer. Of course, we're going to do this through split toning, but the base for this is coming from the adjusted white balance, which I'm going to do now. So I'm going to bring up the temperature and I'm going to make the whole base image warmer, as you can see this way. So something like this looks pretty nice. I'm not going to touch the tint. I think the magenta tones in the sky look pretty good, so not going to change it. What I'm going to do is to bring up the vibrance just to make the colors a little more colorful and I'm going to bring up the texture which will make the details of the image look sharper and I want to have a glowy dreamy look on top so as always I'm going to bring down the clarity and the dehaze for that effect. Okay that's the image after the basic adjustments let's compare to before real quick. Not that much has changed except for the exposure, which is much, much better with, lot, with a lot more details in those darkest areas without blowing out the sky. So that's the importance of an HDR image like this, where we can nicely fix those things. Next up, we need to do a little bit of masking, targeting areas more specifically before we can start with the color grading stuff. And I want to start by changing this little chapel right here in the foreground. I'm going to use the landscape mask for that. So let's click on landscape. Lightroom will detect a bunch of different options, sky, mountains, architecture and snow. In this case, we want to choose architecture and click on create mask. You see the mask is not perfect, but it shouldn't be a big deal. What I want to do in here is to bring up the exposure a little further, making the subject just a bit brighter. I'm also going to bring up the shadows and let me raise the clarity. This will just give this building a little more structure. I'm also going to raise the texture, making it appear to be sharper. Still, you can see some kind of blue color cast on this chapel itself. So. I want to fix that by playing around with the white balance temperature. I'm just going to bring it up very gently, giving it a more natural look this way. I think the saturation might be a bit, a bit too strong, so let's bring that down right away 
just like that. Beautiful. That's looking much, much better. I also want to make the hill this chapel is standing on a little bit brighter, giving this whole scene a little more depth this way. What I'm going to do, let me create a new mask. I'm going to choose Select Objects. And in this mask, I'm going to make sure to use the Rectangle Select mode because this will give me better results. Now, I want to select this little hill right here in the foreground. I'm going to draw a rectangle around it and hopefully Lightroom will detect it. As you can see, this works really, really good. Now, I don't want to make the whole hill brighter. I just want to change the very top. I'm going to subtract a linear gradient, taking out the foreground. And this will basically become our shadow right here in the foreground. Let's aim for something like this. What I'm going to do next is to bring up the exposure, making this hill brighter. Let's also add a bit of clarity. And that's looking much better. I'm still not happy with the near foreground, so let me use a linear gradient, just targeting the very bottom part. And in here, I'm just going to bring down the exposure, creating some kind of shadow. Just like this. Beautiful. So now comes the most important area of the image, the sky, which we want to make a lot more colorful. For that, we need to do some more fine tuning. Let me create a new mask. I'm going to start with a select sky mask, targeting the whole sky. And it might still be a bit too bright, so I'm going to bring down the highlights a little further, like this. Now we have a lot more details. We can actually see some clouds up in here. For the sky in general, this is looking good. Now I want to add a little more punch to it. Let me create a new sky mask. This time I want to change the top part. So I'm going to subtract a radial gradient and I'm taking out the bottom like this. Pretty much all these bright areas down below. With the rest of the mask, I'm going to bring down the exposure and this will add some nice contrast to this image. So like this, I can even bring up the contrast itself you will see how this will nicely make those clouds pop. So something like this. Beautiful. And then I'm also going to target the opposite side of the sky. So again, I'm going to start with a sky selection. This time I'm going to subtract a linear gradient and I'm going to take out everything from the top. In this area in particular, I want to be very, very warm and bright and turn it into a really nicely glowing sunrise. I'm going to bring up the exposure. Just need to be very, very careful to not overdo it with the brightness. You can see how the light is kind of cold and blue. That's not what I want. So I'm going to bring up the temperature, introducing a lot more warmth to it. I'm going to pump up the temperature quite a bit. So like this. I think I'm also going to bring up the tint just to make it a little warmer. And let's bring up the saturation. So that's looking really, really good already. Let me turn off all the masks so you can see the difference from before from our base image to after with the masking applied. You can see the subject is standing out a lot more now through all these masking adjustments and the sky looks much, much better. But the colors are still lacking. So now that we're done with the masking stuff, let's go ahead, open up the color grading panel for the split toning. So I have explained this tool quite a lot, but I want to go through it one more time. We do have a bunch of different options. Right here in the upper row, you can see different circles. These all have different meanings. We can specifically work on the shadows, the midtones, the highlights, and we do have a global color wheel. I'm usually starting with the highlights. And in here, I can tell Lightroom to give all the highlights of the image a specific color tone with specific saturation and I can even make the highlights brighter or darker depending on what I need. So for this image we want to have a warm intense sunrise. That means we need to find a warm color tone that fits the scene. I'm going with something in the red range. So let's bring up the hue to somewhere around here. So far nothing has changed. We simply have set up the hue. But in order to be able to see this effect, we need to use the saturation. Right now it's set to zero, so we won't have any visible effect. But if we bring it up, you can see how all the highlights of the image are changing. 
So since I want to have a super intense color for the highlights, I'm going to bring up the saturation all the way. That's something I rarely do, but for this image it looks really, really good in my opinion. Notice how only the highlights are changing. The shadows are still covered in this dark blue color tone. What we can do in the highlights for now, we can also work on the luminance, which is the brightness of the highlights. I want to add a little more contrast, so I'm going to use the luminance slider and bring up the brightness, kind of pushing the tonal range of this whole scene a little more this way. Okay, that's looking great. Now let's head over into the midtones. Here for the midtones, we most of the times have some more options. Like in this case, we could use a warmer color tone. So let's say we're going to set up the hue to a warm red tone like this, and we're going to bring up the saturation. This will give us a way more intense sunrise, but we're kind of losing a little bit of color contrast. So in this case, that's not what I want. I want the clouds in the sky and the brighter part of the sky to be warmer, while the darker part of the sky remains kind of cold. That means I'm going to use the midtones and let's change the hue to a cold color tone. Let's go with something like this. You can already see how the whole image looks a lot different now and a lot colder. That's because the saturation is quite high. I want to dial it down. We need, we need to find a nice balance for the highlights, the midtones and the shadows to work together. I don't want to use no saturation. I want to just bring it up until I'm happy with how the top part of the sky is looking. So I think that's looking pretty good. Also, I'm going to use the luminance slider to further push the contrast. As I said in the intro, I want to keep this image rather dark. So I'm going to use the luminance and bring it down very gently, somewhere like minus 12 maybe, to add a little more contrast this way and make this whole shot look a bit more dramatic. Then let's check out the shadows. For the shadows, I usually go with a cold color tone, but of course that's highly dependent on the scene. For this shot, you can see the shadows already have some kind of blue tone. So I can make these stronger by setting up the hue to a blue tone as well. And usually for the shadows, I'm going to use minimal amounts of saturation just to have a hint of blue in those dark areas. So let's bring up the saturation like that. And that's fine already. Again, I'm using the luminance right here. I'm going to bring it down very, very carefully to just push the contrast a little more. Let me deactivate the split toning for a second so you can see the difference from before. You can see the colors are quite desaturated at that point to after. That's looking much, much better. But we're not done yet with the split toning. You might have noticed there are different sliders below with blending and balance. These sliders are covering the shadows, the mid-tones and the highlights all at once. If I'm going to change the balance and I'm going to bring up the balance slider, this will make the highlights more intense. However, if I bring it down, this will bring out the shadows more, making the image colder. For this scene, what I want to do is I want to make it a little warmer, so I'm going to slightly bring up the balance to the right side. Okay, now what about the blending slider? Basically, if I bring it down to zero, this will get less intense. Now, if I bring it up a little bit, the colors will get pushed a little further. So we can play around with that as well, making everything look more colorful. I'm going to slightly bring up the blending like this. Okay, nice. Now we have one more color wheel to work on, and that is the global color wheel right here. So again, I want to set up the hue to a warm color tone, somewhere in the red range. And I'm going to slightly bring up the saturation as well. Okay, I think that looks great. And that's a really intense look, but I really love how this works with this scene. So that's the image after the split toning adjustments. Let me turn off the split toning for a moment so to, to again see the difference from before to after. Much, much better. Now that's it for the color grading panel. One more thing I want to do, I want to open up the calibration tab and I just want to bring down the blue primary hue a bit and I want to push the saturation a little further right here. That's something I do for all my images because I really love this effect it has on the colors of an image. All right, and finally, let's go into the details tab to sharpen this image. I'm going to bring down the radius all the way 
increase the details all the way up. Then we want to apply some masking while holding down the Alt key so we can nicely see which areas of the image get sharpened. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. And we are done editing this image. So I hope I was able to make the color grading panel in Lightroom a little bit easier to understand. If you have any questions left, let me know in the comments. I will gladly help you. And thank you so much for watching this video.